<lacht> Silly Gurke hier auf der IP 149.2.1.7.134. Alternativ erreichbar unter sillyhuhn.com. Das ist der gratis erreichbare Minecraft-Server Laser Gurkenland. Ohne Regeln, auf dem wir jetzt spielen werden. Und wir schauen weiter den Talk von Aaron Jones, Security Introduction to Exploits. Wir sind bei einer Stunde, 16 Minuten, 16 Sekunden auf dem Channel Aaron Clough. Okay. There is a huge warning right there. In addition to that, for the Linux encoder one, I did not add a link to that, but that text is right there, and y'all know what to do. If you don't know what to do, it's probably safe. Yeah. <laughs> just, just in case. So. Ransomware is in the news. Everybody knows about it, okay? We all know about it. But it's a big deal because they're making a lot of money. And ransomware exists no matter what your operating system is. Some of us use Mac and Linux. Some of us have Windows computers. And some of us are reading off the DSD. Okay? Because there are variants out there with varying levels of effectiveness. Some of them are real easy to crack. Some of them, people go in there and they take a look at it and they say, oh yeah, okay, you just encrypted all of my hard drive, but no big deal because I, I have a way to break this encryption simply because they didn't encrypt the files correctly. That exists. That's out there. But let's not rely on that. Okay? That is not a thing to rely on in the hopes that, well, if this person screws up and they get my data, eh, no big deal. I don't care. This also exists for iOS. Android, your phone, there are ways that you can end up with your phone locked. Now, typically, uh, and I know there's some people in the audience that I can see right here that aren't going to like this statement, but typically, you will find these vulnerabilities in the phone in Android, and typically, it's against users who are rooted. Now, not all of them require your phone to be rooted, there are some. Number one thing, talk to your data center. If you know that there's a threat coming, or you are warned, hey, we're going to walk all your stuff, or hey, we're going to DDoS you. You better start getting that money together. You better head on out there to trade for some Bitcoin. We're going to get you. You better have that money ready when you show up. They send emails out like that all the time. Your number one thing in your data center, your office, because your data center potentially has ways of mitigating this stuff that maybe isn't turned on due to cost saving reasons that they can flip on in the event of a problem. You go into battle mode, the fight, right? You train like you fight, you fight like you train. We have an emergency, I know what to expect, I know what's going to happen, I know what to look for, I know what's about to come at me, so I need to take X action. Now, we may not be able to prevent or expect every single contingency. We might not know exactly what's coming, but we can have a pretty good idea if we understand the attack. What are people doing? How are they pointing that at us? And then how can we react? So talk to the data center. Because they probably know. They're managing 
hundreds if not thousands of companies, and they've probably seen it before. Hey, I got this letter. It says that they're going to send uh, 500 kilobytes per second DDoS. Hey, they can't all be fun. So <laughs> they're going to send a DDoS at me. I need to be ready for it. What do I do? Hey, you know what? For an extra 10 bucks a month, we'll flip on Cloudflare for you. Oh, okay, cool. You never know. Number two, don't pay the ransom. Don't do it. When you start paying the ransom, that means that you are not prepared. Get prepared. Have backup. Have continuous plan. Be ready. Know what to do in the event of an emergency. And I'm sure you've all seen it before. They send out documentation that says, in the event of an emergency, have some water, have some food, you know, have all of these things in your home so that you're prepared for a problem. See, that same thing right here. Be prepared. Don't pay the ransom. Be ready for whatever it is that's coming. You can also contact law enforcement. FBI has a cyber crime group. Your local law enforcement group has like computer crime units, things like that. You can contact them. They may not be as helpful right now, but we're definitely working on trying to turn that around. They are starting to really catch people. If you've been watching the news, uh, a gentleman just went away from one of the longest computer crime sentences ever. They're going after folks. And they're finding them in other countries. So it does not hurt to communicate with your law enforcement. Good idea, actually. Let them know what you're experiencing. Keep them in the loop. I link to the FBI cybercrime because this will be out on the internet. There will be people from all over the country that, uh, or the world potentially will be looking at this. you got to understand, you know, depending on where you live, your local law enforcement may not be able to help you, but somebody like the FBI may be able to. Employ DDoS mitigation tools, and personally, I think Cloudflare is a good potential start. Personal opinion, if they have a pretty neat product, it does some pretty neat things, and really want to start. Now, of course, if your business is large enough, or your web page has enough traffic, potentially you may not be able to use this. You may need to use something else. You may be looking for some sort of CDN, even something potentially that you put out there yourself. Some kind of content delivery network to load balance everything and to protect yourself. Obviously, that's going to get into more money. And really, that's what DDoS is about. That's what any kind of denial of service about is if I have an attack, can I make that attack large enough that you can't outreach anything? If you look at Krebs on security, if you look on, at Schneier, there are a lot of people who go out there and donate CDN access, they donate money, they donate time, they do all of this stuff to these guys to keep them up and running. And the only reason why they're up and running is because those individuals are expending enough time, effort, and cash to keep these people up. But there was points where the DDoS was large enough, especially when Mirai first came out, that DDoS attack was big enough that everybody dropped these guys. Okay? Everybody stepped away. It took Google stepping in and being like, you know what, we're going to take a shot at it and see if we've never seen an attack this big and we want to take it straight to the chin to see if we can do it. Somebody had to put in the effort. But I'll tell you right now, most of us, especially within this room, wouldn't be able to afford to mitigate an attack like that. We just couldn't do it. We can't outspend something that large. Wie schnell fliegen die denn? What the fuck? Don't do it. Get your backup. Get ready. Be prepared. Have a mission statement. Hey, public. I apologize. Club Penguin Fan Club is going to be down for a couple of days because nah. we have an attack. It's going to happen. Sorry. You can't afford to pay tens of thousands of dollars on an hourly basis to this web page of to service all 18 of you. <laughs> so, as soon as they decide that we're not worth it anymore, we'll be right back up and running again. Don't pay their ransom. Hey, number seven, back up your files. And then protect those backups. Don't make backups available from your potentially infected computer.
computers because most attacks are opportunistic. So don't make it easy on them. Do not make a backup and then store it on the exact same computer that you're using to surf the internet that could potentially be infected. Guess what happens to your backup? It infected. And it happens all the time. Do it's not looting. make your backups uh, yeah. available from the machine that you are backing up. And it sounds like an easy concept, but people forget. When you are traversing a network, if I am in a block and I have access to your network and I'm inside your house and I'm starting to wrap stuff up in tape, don't put your backups inside the box that I'm going to wrap up. It's that easy. But a lot of people forget this. You have to make sure that your data is safely segregated away from the network so that somebody can't get access. Okay? Can't say it enough. And you know what? I'm going to throw in a number nine in there. Don't pay the rent. So now we're going to move towards Tally Linux. Backtrack Linux is no longer maintained. For those of you who are my students, sometimes you will hear me say backtrack because I'm old like that. I say backtrack. But backtrack really doesn't exist anymore. Okay? Tally Linux is sort of the new hotness, and it is an operating system, and of course I have a list to it, so if you want to follow that, that's fine, it really is just like, you know, it's like a clean web page, and it's got images of dragons and stuff, so you know they're serious. So, keep in mind. So Tally Linux is the operating system of choice for individuals looking for a system configured for executing attacks. That's all it is. Okay? It's got a whole bunch of software already installed on it. It's based off of Debian. So if you know how to use app and you are familiar with like Ubuntu or Debian, you kind of already know how to use it. However, this is not a daily driver. You do not get in this thing and set it up on your laptop and just use your daily driver. Oh boy. It is open for the sole purpose of executing you don't live in this thing, okay? Does everybody follow? You don't live in this. So Kali Linux and the Kali Linux project is an open source operating system that is maintained and funded by offensive security. And the Kali Linux OS is based on Debian. And it is my opinion that users should use Kali Linux as an example of what is possible, but should not rely on this system as a crutch. Nothing installed in Backtrack or Kali ja, yeah, deswegen ist es so useless, <coughs> eine ganze Docker-Dings aufzuspinnen für ein Tool davon. Das schon wieder. Ja, ja. Ja. <lacht> Greifen die an? Was sind das für Dinge? Ja, ich weiß, dass Bienen sind, aber... Okay, so das gibt mir jetzt, das haben wir jetzt zum vierten Mal gehört mit dem... Saturday night special of computers. And you're standing there and having to defend your 
himself against somebody saying, look at all these dragons on this computer. This person's hardcore. They gotta go. Something to keep in mind. It's a personal opinion, but for every single one of my students, I always tell them, take your inspiration, work with it. Work with your art. Build from it. But don't get inside of something like that, especially when you're using it for business or you're using it out there in the, the real world and particularly hamstring yourself if you ever have to get up in front of somebody and explain what you're doing. Just food for thought. Okay? So here's some of the answers. So identify at least three types of attack vectors, brute force attack. Uh, man in the middle attacks, started with editor tap. Social engineering, the social engineering uh, toolkit. We talk about DNS poisoning, those are all social attacks. Identify a piece of software that can be used to execute the support attack. Soll ich die Schafe mitnehmen? Identify what the main concept of two factor authentication is. Hmm. Two factor's main concept is something you have, it's something you know. If I have a phone with some codes in it, it's something I have. Generating the code inside of like the Google Authenticator. And then of course I have my password or I have my uh, SSH key or whatever else. But I have two methods of being able to access that information. Identify a Linux operating system that is used for penetration testing. Hey, you hear that? Sally Linux is an OS that can be used for penetration testing. Identify a product you manage two-factor authentication. FastPass is a product that provides acceptable two-factor management. There are, of course, other ones. Google Authenticator, FastPass, uh, there's a endless number of them. Pick your device, pick what you like, pick what you know how to use, and you can employ it. But the most important part is you get started to use it. And then identify a training ethos that will make users more likely to take it. Train like you fight, and you will fight like you that is so practiced by cybersecurity experts as well as other people who work in law enforcement. We don't train against imaginary stuff. There isn't a class that you go to to learn how to fight something. Believe it or not, right? I see some I see some disbelief out there in the crowd. But believe it or not, they actually train against things that they expect could potentially actually happen. That is what you need to be doing. Could somebody potentially try to brute force your WordPress site? Yeah, they could. Could they potentially attempt to break into your SSH server? Yes, they could. Is some kind of space alien from a foreign planet going to try to come in through the wall and everybody's got to be able to fight it off with chairs? Probably not so much. It's not something that you're going to practice for. So we need to remember, no software, no tool, nothing is free of vulnerability. In my classes, I always tell them, my students, learn the tool and then learn how the tool can hurt you. How can the tool be used against you? Okay? When you are learning these concepts, it's not just about learning how to use said tool. How can you use it against somebody? If I learn how to curl, what can I do with curl? Well, I can write a script in Bash, and I can thread, and then I can start sending curl requests over and over and over again, and then I've written a brute forcer, depending on whatever it is that I'm going after. So curl is a neat tool to be able to post some information or pull something down off the internet or even make a download, but in addition to that, I can put in a script, and within a few moments, I can be iterating through a list of passwords that I downloaded 24 gigabytes worth and executing curl attacks. Fast, easy. So we as security professionals and programmers and end users must manage the risk as we see fit or to standard as appropriate for our position. It is impossible to plan for every contingency or weakness, but we can plan to provide ourselves with the greatest number of security layers. That term. So you should employ best practices, appropriate user management, and monitor for threats on a regular basis. 
You must also be prepared to react when the system is attacked and the database or other data is compromised. We can manage our security. We cannot manage the security of the product we use. Prepare for the work. We can listen and we can say, hey, I'm ready. In the event something happens, I get crypto losses. Well, guess what? I have backups. Those backups are not on my network. I make regular incremental backups and I can recover. Perhaps I lost a day. Perhaps I lost a week on how often you need to do this and how important your data is. But you can prepare, you can be confident, and you can reduce some of the worry on you. Get ready today when the stuff happens, when it really goes down and you're in the fight, if you've already trained for it, you prepared for it, you know what's going to happen, and then you can just do it. And it's natural. Your body will take over. It's that quick. I look and I see in my email that a Bitcoin web page that I have an account on has been broken into. And I look around online at some of the usual suspects and I didn't see anything listed, so I know it's a recent attack. And what did they do? Somebody sent an email from that web page pretending to be the web page saying, hey, here's a Word document, right? Like I'm going to use Word. For those of you who don't know me, I'm straight them, them all, mm -hmm. all day. Them and handoff. Okay, that's it. So they sent me a Word document and said, when you get into this document, you will have to accept like some Google stuff, and then we'll eventually deliver you some Bitcoin. And it wasn't very readable. You could tell somebody was trying really hard. And I identified the attack immediately, but it also gives me a little bit of information in terms of, well, I know that this web page has been broken into. I know somebody had access that my email address with plain text because now they're using it. They're sending me stuff that's showing up in my spam. Okay? But when I saw that, I immediately knew what happened. It wasn't a thing that I had to think about or I didn't click on anything, nothing. I immediately, my reaction was, all right, I'm being fished. They have my information. Where did the information come from? Oh, look, let's take a look at the email. I know where I use this email to register because I use different emails for every site. So I know, and for those of you who don't know, you can actually, if you have like an email account, which I use as like my burner, so if you have a, an email account, you can add a plus, yeah, and then a little bit of text after, and email will actually take the text that's between the plus and the at symbol, and it will leave it there, but it doesn't actually like do anything with it. You can have Aaron plus Bitcoin forum full of janky people at gmail.com. And then I can register with that, and it'll send data to that. And then I can see where I got attacked because I have a different email address for every single account. Or for every single account. So if somebody gets hacked, I know where that hack came from because I can see somebody attempting to make an attack at me using a specific email address that was only shared with a specific company. And of course, that also counts for companies that say we don't share your data, but they really do. So then you can find out that yeah, they are actually sharing. And then I've got some final recommendations here. And of course, down at the bottom, we have a glossary for anybody who saw some terms or anything that I was discussing. I tried to put a list of stuff down there that if you didn't follow along, there's a breakdown of it. But we have to regularly test for vulnerabilities or exploits. You have to. It's got to be done, okay? Uh, if you're not doing it, if you're not testing your defenses, you're not doing yourself a disservice. If you have a WordPress site and you share that WordPress site with a few users, Set yourself up with a day or an evening where you set up WP Craft and you enumerate your user list and you execute the top 500 passwords. And just make sure that nobody's broken. Because if they are, you can go down and you can have a conversation with that person. Hey, you got into your account. Your account shows this password. That's the problem. We need to talk about security. We need to sit down and have a talk. Okay? And guess what? In real companies, that happens. That's what penetration testers do. They go in and they make an attempt to get into a system. They try to break in. They try to find vulnerabilities. And then they tell you about those vulnerabilities. Hey, this is how I got in. This is where I found a problem. And then, of course, because I'm just begging for it, contribute to the community by creating the new size doctrine, which is for tools. 
anybody wants to take me up on that, I would really appreciate it. Put a little effort into giving back to the community. It really does help. So that is essentially our thing. And since it is the end here, I would like to open up for questions. Oh, I should with some bullet aid. It's a very good lesson this year.
Los. Geht ihm natürlich auch selber auf den Sack die ganze Zeit. Okay. Das war äh, Aaron Jones mit dem Talk Security Introduction to Exploits. Ähm, war dann doch nicht so praktisch, äh, wie ich dachte. Klang jetzt so, als hätte der, als wäre es irgendwas zum Mitmachen oder so. Aber war wohl doch wieder ein ganz entspannter Talk. 
auf dem Channel Brian Clough. Wir haben bei 1 Stunde 16 Minuten und 16 Sekunden angefangen. Den ersten Teil gibt es in der letzten Episode hier von der Dauerwerbesendung für den gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server Laser Gurkenland mit der IP 149.202.127.134 und der Domain zippyhoon.com. Ähm, war da Holz? Ach nee. Äh, genau, das war's dann mit dieser Episode. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten. Ciao.